Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We are going to prepare a maxillary second bicuspid for a porcelain fused to gold veneer. We are going to use a round diamond, the approximate size of a number six steel round burr, to make a waffle pattern in the labial enamel. And then we are going to also make tracer cuts on the occlusal surface so we have sufficient reduction on this occlusal. And then we will take a 699 diamond to open up the interproximal and then place a semi-chamfer on the lingual surface with a one quarter K diamond. very important that we reduce this labial surface enough in order to get good contour and to get natural color. <clears throat> in this type of down situation, we will keep the finishing line above the gingiva. And with this technique, we will bury this diamond to the shank. Bring it in in approximately slightly both on the mesial and the distal. The mesial and interproximal is the most important because that is where the good color must be in order for this to appear as if it is a natural tooth. We'll make them another cut midway in the tooth, again utilizing the shank to be a self-limiting factor here in how deep this cut is made, and then we'll make a cut across the incisal edge, and the bicuspid where there is not as much room as the cuspid that we prepared, we'll make one vertical one vertical cut to establish reduction in that axis. And then we will take the same diamond and run it across the occlusal surface. But in this occlusal area, we will go the full depth of the diamond burr, the full depth of the diamond burr. And we will then extend this out to the interproximal. This will then allow us to get good color in this occlusal area and also to develop some good occlusal anatomy. This diamond then can be used in the embrasure and interdental space area to bring the finishing line more into the interproximal. Care must be taken not to disturb the adjacent tooth. Now we will change to a 770-7 diamond and remove these small islands of enamel that are left. And this will, again, duplicate the curvature on this labial surface and give us approximately a millimeter and a half of reduction on this labial surface and approximately two millimeters of reduction on the occlusal surface. <coughs> With the same diamond, we can go a little farther in approximately. Again, taking care not to 
disturb the adjacent tooth. And then coming in from the lingual, we can reduce the occlusal surface. Again, using the same diamond, reducing the occlusal surface from this axis, and then we'll turn the diamond around, and then coming in from the buckle, we can develop that part of the cut. We can move the diamond then to the lingual portion and uh, bevel that aspect of the lingual it's important that we do maintain the contour of the occlusal surface if we have too much of a thickness of porcelain this excess glass tends to absorb any forces that are applied to it and it would tend to fracture rather than transmitting the force to the metal and tooth understructure. The next instrument that we will use then is the 699-9 diamond and that will be used to slice this interproximal area. It's rather difficult to get in with the 770 in this interproximal area or the carrot shaped uh, three-quarter K diamond so the very thin diamond will be used to open up that inner proximal area. <clears throat> if you're careful, you can slice this very easily without cutting the adjacent tooth. Now we'll go to the mesial. With the same diamond then, <clears throat> after you have sliced the mesial and distal, we will place a long bevel on this labial or buckle surface that will give us a gold collar. In the anterior part of the mouth, we try to avoid a gold collar because the gold will show through the gingiva as a bluish gray hue. And also when the gingiva recedes, eventually the gold collar will show. In the posterior, however, I'm cuspid there back, it is perfectly legitimate to use a gold collar, and this is the finishing line that is used most often on a posterior tooth. We will place this bevel by using a very light, <coughs> very light touch. It does not have to be a very deep bevel. It's a very slight bevel. And this bevel will go from the buckle right into your inner proximal slice that you made just previous to this. This again should be a very sharp and distinct finishing line that will be readily visible. On your die. Using a light touch, I see. Now we will change this 
to a three-quarter K diamond and reduce the lingual of our preparation. You can see from the mirror shot what we have thus far. We can move the mirror over here and get more from the occlusal there. We have prepared the entire tooth except for the lingual surface here. And on this lingual, we will try to make a slight chamfer, again, to give us some strength to our casting in that area. Blend this finishing line then into the inner proximal slice. Again, the reason that this diamond is not used for the inner proximal is that it's a little bit bulky and it would tend to cut the adjacent tooth. I'll try to keep the finishing line in this particular instance above the soft tissue. Again, trying to use a high speed and a light touch. Round this lingual, the two the lining the whole slightly, need to get a little bit sharp. And then we'll check our occlusion by closing the typhodon and seeing if we have two millimeters of clearance in working and in balancing. And we seem to have pretty good clearance except for the lingual cusp. And to reduce that lingual cusp a little bit more, we're going to switch to a WM1M diamond to reduce that slightly. <coughs> it's important, again, to have enough reduction if you want to get good color on this uh, occlusal surface. Okay. There's a little more reduction in this area. We'll round these line angles a little bit with this instrument. And then we'll turn this around and bevel this line angle again. Now, the only thing that's left to do is to use a sand disc to remove the roughnesses, and then we'll be finished. Get the sand disc in the mandrel. We'll use a medium sand. And again, we will soften the disc, fingernail, not on the abrasive side, but the paper side. And then we'll use this to remove the roughnesses that are created by the diamond instrument.
and we'll turn this at 90 degrees here and in the proximal. And by using a mirror, we'll try to get into the lingual. Again, with the sand disc, you can smooth your line angles. I'll come in from this direction to see if we can't get the other aspect of the lingual. The occlusal surface very often is difficult to reach with the sand disc, so a instrument that sometimes is helpful is a rubber wheel, of course abrasive, and that can be used to press down the occlusal surface. Okay, now we'll just dust this off. We have a little bit of roughness here on the shoulder, and we have our bevel already established. And you can use a wheel stat just to make sure that any unsupported enamel rods are not left in this preparation. Our finishing line goes beyond this. Still a good idea to dress this up so that there are no enamel rods breaking off after you seat the crown. Now with a millimeter and a half reduction, our gold collar placed all the way around in the labial and the chamfer and the lingual and enough occlusal reduction, we have completed our preparation on this bicuspid. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.